You see, the more you have of anything, the less value it can accrue. Which is incidentally where the new Star Wars film is going to be complete fan pandering. Star Wars The Farce and Gorges is the seventh installment in the Star Wars trilogy. It was directed, co-produced, and co-written by Juju Banks. This is very, very bad. Oh! <laughs> and shilled by a woefully waltless Disney. It stars this guy, John Boyega. And this chick, Daisy Ridley. And oh my god, this girl cannot act her way out of a biodegradable paper bag. This is a ship that made the Kessel Run in 14 parsecs. Here we go. We need your help. help. This joint has to get through this space as soon as possible. It's carrying a map to the Skywalker. All that nice. Mm. Oh, great. Ah, oh, there. That's better. But to be fair, this is probably one of Harrison Ford's worst performances too. Hey! By the way, a lot of the original cast returned for this movie. As geriatrics! <laughs> Let's just get into it. The story begins with the Galactic Empire. Sorry, I mean the First Order. Hunting down a rebel leader. Sorry, I mean a resistance pilot who has the Death Star plans. Sorry, I mean a star chart to Luke Skywalker's location. The pilot, Poe, stores the chart inside of a robot named R2-D2. Sorry, I mean BB-8, which then flees into the desert of Tatooine. Sorry, I mean Jakku, to get the chart back to the Rebellion. Sorry, I mean... The Resistance! As the stormtroopers slaughter a village for this chart, one of them has second thoughts on the ethical and moral pretexts of what they're doing. Coincidentally, he's the only one on the extermination team to suddenly sprout a conscience. Oh my god, we're murderers! Also, I thought the stormtroopers were all clones of this cold-blooded assassin guy. But it turns out the clones were decommissioned to off-screen and now these are just programmable humans. Which is a shame because retconning the stormtroopers to all be young black men would have made total sense. As to why they can't shoot for shit. Who'd have thunk these space Nazis would be so racially diverse? Nigga, nigga. Huh. Mein Führer, Steiner. Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. The space Nazis are led by a Sith named Darth Vader. Sorry, I mean Darth Vader wannabe, Kylo Ren, who was once the Padawan of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, Luke Skywalker, but turns to the dark side because Padme gonna die. Sorry, I mean, I have no idea why Kylo Ren turned to the dark side. But who cares? Not two billion dollars. Anyway, Poe is captured, but the defective stormtrooper helps him to escape on a TIE fighter, and they become fast friends. Or gay lovers, it's too early to tell. Poe names the defect Finn, based off his designation, FN2187. And they shoot terrible one-liners back and forth at each other until they promptly crash land back onto Jakku and get separated. Conveniently, the movie never explains how they get separated, and how Poe gets off the planet later. That's not super lazy awful, right? Let me assure you. Elsewhere in Jakku, there's Luke Skywalker. Sorry, I mean Rey. Some scavenger urchin girl who is coincidentally not a slave on this extremely remote desert planet. Why is she even here? I don't know. Who cares? Not two billion dollars! Coincidentally, R2-D2 finds Luke and... Sorry, I mean BB-8 finds Rey. And then, coincidentally, Finn finds them because coincidentally the TIE fighter crash landed in the approximate area out of all the places to smash into a planet. What's your hurry, thief? What? Thief? 
Ow! Hey, what? The jacket. This droid says you stole it. Just because I'm black? Ow! And then the First Order shows up for them, but coincidentally, the Millennium Falcon is just sitting there. And coincidentally, Rey can expertly fly it, even though she says she's never done so before. And she, Finn, and BB-8 escape. You ever fly this thing? No! I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. But lo and behold, Finn and Rey meet fan bait characters, Han Solo and Chewie, who are for some reason freighting around black market alien monsters nowadays. Obligatory, I have a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. Rey releases one of these monsters, some tentacly beast that kills a bunch of bad guys instantly, but when it gets hold of Finn, it coincidentally carries him through several corridors until Rey is able to save him, and they all escape by jumping into hyperspace. <clears throat> Oh, and Rey magically repairs the Falcon, pinpointing the exact problem before Han does, even though he's flown it for over 30 years and she's only just stepped inside of a ship like this for the first time in her life. I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and verisimilitude of this incredible writing. We just wanted this thing to not feel uh, like it was uh, not uh, inclusive. Women are half of the population, so they should represent half of a film. At I least. think. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the Death Star, I'm sorry, I mean the Star Killer. No, not that Star Killer. This Star Killer, which is like 10 times bigger than the original Death Star and uses whole suns to power it and can like blow up multiple planets simultaneously instead of just one and more, more, more. By the way, the First Order is supposed to be a lingering remnant of the Fallen Empire and ostensibly is not at all a dominant power. Yet they still have the resources to build a weapon larger than the two previous Death Stars combined and oh, the icing on the cake. They've managed to hide its existence utterly from the resistance. So it's fresh. Still making too much sense for you? The New Republic is now the ruling governing body of the galaxy, but its military is called the Resistance. Resistance from what? Aren't you guys in charge now? What's next? Stormtrooper lives matter? <clears throat> Moving on. Kylo Ren, having failed repeatedly to capture his targets, goes to have a chat with his boss, some hologram of a giant Peter Jackson CG monster. And I honestly don't remember what the f happens in this scene, other than some exposition to establish that Kylo is Han and Leia's son. Yeah. They're pretending that this and this made this. Leia, is there something you want to tell us? I got a bad feeling about this. You are the fight! <laughs> As an aside, why is everybody related to each other in this galaxy? Why are there so many f coincidences? Speaking of, it turns out over the past 30 years, everybody's f forgotten what the Jedi and the Force are, despite an entire empire recently being toppled because of Jedi. And so Han is to confirm for Rey and Finn that that it really did happen, for reals. Anyway, Rey immediately wins Han over with her unexplainable resourcefulness and her sudden unexplainable super piloting capabilities and her knowledge of fixing a ship that's unexplainably more extensive than his own, and she's just so gosh darn perfect and quirky and badass and awesome and can handle herself, guys. Don't f***ing hold her hand. Is it because I'm black? <laughs> hey, can anyone say Mary Sue? Now, our protagonists go to some space cantina to find another Han Solo to take them to the Resistance. I'm sorry. I mean, they go to a space cantina in search of another Han Solo, and Rey coincidentally stumbles upon Luke's lightsaber, which was inexplicably recovered and coincidentally ended up at this exact spot for Rey to coincidentally find, and it's coincidentally imbued with the power to give her visions which tell her she's a Jedi, because that's a previously unknown feature that lightsabers coincidentally have. Rey, incidentally, rejects it. Hold up. Then the Star Killer blows up three or five Alderons. I don't know, and is about as emotionally involving as that Vulcan planet Juju exploded in his first Star Trek movie. I hereby relinquish my command based on the fact that I have been emotionally compromised. Then the First Order shows up at the cantina and Rey manages to get hold of a laser pistol thing and is coincidentally a perfect shot by the second time she fires it, outperforming all of the stormtroopers who presumably trained all of their lives to fire these things. Marae Sue? And then Kylo Ren Force knocks her out and she's captured. The Resistance shows up, led by a plastic replica of Leia, and it turns out that she and Han are no longer down for even some covert boob grabbing, because this is definitely what fans wanted for the heroes who saved the f***ing galaxy 30 f***ing years ago. Divorce. There were Things about the original trilogy, it was a groundbreaking, mind-expanding thing, but... I like the sound of that. The idea for me and for all of us, I think, was to try and, and, and recapture that spirit. Stop that. Don't do that. Stop what? what? Anything. Stop that. 
it didn't need to be redefined. It just need, needed to be brought back for me, which was that, that sense of, of romance. I happen to like nice men. Nice men. Very nice. Very nice. You change your hair. I don't like sand. Romance. Kylo Ren and his forces leave without the robot because Kylo thinks the girl will be enough to extract the contents of the star chart, though he has absolutely nothing to base this on. Then Finn and Poe are very, very briefly reunited and ignore the fact that Poe abandoned his mission and left Jakku on his own and more fan bait shows up. And then the Rebellion discusses how to take out the Death Star. Sorry, I mean, the Resistance discusses how to take out the Star Killer. Coincidentally, there's also an easily accessible and hugely exploitable weakness that if only a small band of people can get inside and take down the shields, the Resistance X-Wings can fly into a trench-like structure, take a couple of pot shots, and blow the whole thing up. How convenient! And the Resistance can glean the specifics of all this from Finn because, coincidentally, he used to be a sanitation worker on the Star Killer, and sanitation workers would absolutely know this kind of information. <laughs> The black guy was a space janitor. Kylo Ren interrogates Rey, but of course gets nowhere because he's such a f***ing non-threat. And so he unmasks himself, revealing that he's an emo man-child. And it's all Rey can do to not laugh in his baby face. Kylo storms out crying and leaves a single stormtrooper to guard Rey, who uses Jedi mind tricks on him to escape despite not having known if the Force even existed before that very f***ing day. Maure Su. Then the others break into the Death Star and lower its defenses. I'm sorry, I mean lower the defenses of the Star Killer. And then Emo Vader shows up and there's a scene between him and Han. Now, this scene, this scene would have been worth the price of admission and so much more because I have never laughed harder in my life. Looks like Kylo shot first. Greedo, you have been avenged. You were too good for this world. Well, then Kylo chases down Finn and Rey, and there's a lightsaber duel. For some inexplicable reason, Finn, a non-Force user, holds his own against a Sith apprentice trained by Luke Skywalker himself, until Rey outforces Kylo, a Sith apprentice, despite not knowing the Force existed until that very day. Ma Rey Su? She takes the lightsaber she previously rejected and then single-handedly whoops Kylo without any lightsaber combat training or experience. Finn, Rey, and Chewie all escape, the Star Killer explodes, and then Luke leaves the Rebellion to find Yoda. Sorry, I mean Rey leaves the Resistance to find Luke Skywalker, even though the Resistance was trying to do the exact same thing the entire runtime of the movie, but Rey manages it all on her own because Ma Rey Su. There's just no time to mourn on. There's no time! And that's it. The end. That's the farce and gorges. I don't really have anything nice to say about it. I didn't like any of the characters. The story was an incoherent mess. I wasn't impressed by the visuals. The music was good, but that can't really be accredited to this film. The only area where I can give the movie credit is in Juju constantly reminding me that I'm watching a movie with all of his lens flare. It's not just every director that will kill immersion in a short burst of flashes like that. <laughs> But of course, there's that one burning question. Do I think it's worse than the prequels? Tentatively, I'm going to say yes. Yes, it was worse than the prequels. Now, now hold on, don't discount me just yet. You've made it this far. As far as storytelling is concerned, the Forest and Gorges in the prequels tell their stories equally as competently. By which I mean neither of them make a lick of sense. In terms of retconning, the Forest and Gorges feels like a direct continuation of where the prequels left off, destroying what sense the originals had remaining. George annihilated the Force, lightsabers, and Darth Vader, while Juju brought up the rear to dismantle the original hero's actions and everything they'd achieved. He tells us that, in under 30 years, Sampire pops up again as the First Order, with forces and weaponry more powerful than ever before. And Luke is so ashamed that he goes into hiding. The romance between Han and Leia has fizzled out. Their own son has become a mass murderer on a system-wide scale. And there's galaxy-wide amnesia about Luke, Leia, and Han's heroic actions having occurred in the first place. In other words, according to Juju, everything they'd worked toward, everything they fought for, all of it is invalidated. Georgie Boy couldn't have done it any better himself. But this is where the prequels come out ahead. At least it tried to hang the original trilogy from new rope. Sure, some of it was just ripping off certain elements and stuffing them everywhere, but a lot of George's distortions were brand spanking new too. Like the Jedi Council, politics, midichlorians, <laughs> politics, droids, politics, even f***ing Jar Jar. He was the key to all of this. Emergency powers to the
the Supreme Chancellor. The farce in Gorgeous, however, just copy-pasted the script of A New Hope and used the replace function on a few names and places. It's the same story with essentially the same characters surrounded by the original characters and upgraded special effects with a slightly altered tone. It's basically that final cut Lucas has been slicing up his original movies to achieve, only with Juju at the helm. I am altering the movie. Pray I don't alter it any further and people gobbled it up to the tune of two billion dollars. I mean, Juju, that's actually kind of impressive. How did you manage to sell the same product to the masses for a second time? Easy. He's not, in fact, a stupid man. Think about it. Why else would they have wanted a sequel anyway? The Star Wars trilogy was a complete story, all tied up with no real loose ends. Any more would just be pandering. And wouldn't you know it, George released the prequels and they were all eventually slammed for shameless pandering. He goes. What if the movie sucks? And yet, in spite of all that, people begged for more. <laughs> Juju only gave them exactly what they wanted. He repackaged the movie they remembered so dearly and resold it to them. Nothing's changed, really. I mean, everything's changed, but nothing's changed. He gave them a rehashed hope. And it worked. Bread and circuses. When you have to call something the original, you should already know there are too many imitators out there. And you know something? I'm not even that big a fan of the original Star Wars trilogy. I respect it for brilliantly capturing the ever-elusive quality of timelessness, but that's a whole nother video. Hey, a little trivia for you. Did you know that George Lucas had so little faith in the original Star Wars that he made a gamble with Steven Spielberg? He bet E.T. would outperform his movie at the box office, so they decided ahead of time to trade 2.5% of their movie's profits. Guess who won that bet? The Jew, of course. That's the movie Star Wars was. A corny, stupid, but passionate B-movie flick that put itself out on a limb although it was afraid to do so. That's the movie fans remember, not some corporate repackaging of nostalgia for profit. Not this abundantly cautious retread for job security, and to milk the cash cow just a few drops more. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. This farce will never be Star Wars. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Because yes, it was well and truly a pile of fan pandering <laughs> I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and versimil- versimil- versimilitude. Fuck me, that's that's a lot of syllables there. Ooh, ooh. I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and verisimilitude. Oh my god. Verisimilitude. Verisimilitude. There we go, that's easy. We can do this. I got this. I got this. I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and verisimilitude. I did it and then I didn't keep going. I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and verisimilitude. Ver me, I had it. I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and I swear, I'm so impressed by the depth and verisimilitude of this incredible writing. Yes. Hey. Fuck off. <laughs>